Hi everybody, my name is Bruce Hendy and I'm with the City of Fort Collins. You know, we're doing a lot in our city with respect to sustainability. And that's something that we hold very near and dear to us as a value. It's held by our community, our voters, and it's something that we think is very important. So what we wanted to do today was to just take you along and show you some. Show you a little bit about what we're doing. Everything that happens on the land affects the water quality. And Living, so working, and playing in and along the court. You know, it's really coming down to how we operate a building. Water conservation in the air and west is very the citizens important. citizens of Fort Collins have done a fabulous job of recycling. Sure. And we have no place to put that water if we have excess water, and that's why we need... Our children deserve an opportunity uh, to explore nature and to play in nature. And on top of that, nature does a phenomenal job of providing services to us. We get clean air, we get clean water, we get wildlife resources. There's this abundance that comes from nature. And conserving nature, in my view, is, is a conservative approach to stewarding our future. You know, environmental sustainability for me is about the long term of this community. It's really taking an ownership in the future of the community and making sure that we do it right and making sure that we're visionary, uh, very practical, but that we are protecting future generations as it relates to our environment. As a sustainable community, we have an obligation to be good stewards of our land, our air, our water, and for future generations to protect our resources. Our Parks Department, by the way, is a great example of somebody that's been doing sustainability for a long time. Currently, we have five of our six community parks already certified by Audubon International as sanctuaries. After we complete the environmental plan, which we've done, we look at wildlife habitat, efficiency for reducing waste, energy reduction. Lee Martinez is the last park. We are the only city in the country where we can claim all of our community parks have achieved Audubon Cooperative Sanctuary status. So while we're making progress, there's still challenges ahead. Everything's connected. I'm standing in the middle of rubble that's been placed to stabilize the banks along the Poudre River. This is, this is a pretty representative condition of the entire stretch of the Poudre through the city of Fort Collins. The reason we do that is we don't want the river destroying the bank and flooding some part of town that we prefer not be flooded, but that's not a very sustainable approach to managing a river. We have both the challenge, but also the opportunity of restoring the river and its access to its floodplain and improving the habitat. We're at McMurray Natural Area and this project has been designed to improve the habitat uh, of the river floodplain with the idea being that we're going to lower the banks along the river and allow those spring floods to come in and flood this area here. It's a place for the water to spread out, slow down, and not cause damages. In the 50s and 60s, there wasn't much thought given to where the water is going to go when it does rain. So oftentimes you have structures that are built up real close to these seemingly quiet little creeks, but those creeks can often become pretty good flowing water during a flood event. And what we're having to do is go in and retrofit those areas, increase the conveyance for the water, places for the water to be stored, for a period of time and then slowly release. So this is what the SIPO project, the Canal Importation Ponds Outfall Project, is doing. It's very unique in the United States that we have a stormwater area that was engineered so well that it looks like it's natural. We're doing a study with Blevins middle schoolers. These are sixth graders and they walked here from the school and they're studying their natural area. And so our mission is really to teach people how to take care of the land so that we preserve the wonderful water quality that we have in our local streams and in the Poudre River that runs through Fort Collins. Everything we do, every resource we use, has an effect. And we as individuals have to take responsibility for that and understand that we actually do have a global impact individually and collectively. Climate change is you know, one of, if not the most important issue facing the world. And it is part of sustainability for us to take responsibility to address it. City Council has adopted our community carbon reduction goals, reduce community carbon emissions 20% below 2005, which is our baseline year, by the year 2020, and to reduce the emissions 80% below that same baseline by 2050. We're one of the few cities in America that actually are reducing our emissions. The municipal operation last year reduced by 10% and the community by 11%.
Fort Collins city government is responsible for only 2% of the overall community emissions. So to make a real difference, it takes the entire community. And it's interesting to note that the largest carbon reductions come from recycling. The citizens of Fort Collins have done a fabulous job of recycling and we're looking right now at about a 43% waste diversion level. We have an organization-wide recycling program. We do everything from conventional office recycling to all of the organic yard clippings from the Parks and Recreation Department to asphalt and cement and even porcelain toilets that are being recycled at Hoffman and Mill Road to be used for making road-based material for new roads. We recycle between 100 and 120,000 ton of product a year. We're one of few cities and I've had a lot of cities around this country call me to say, gee, can I get more information on how you run this recycling operation because they want to be more green. This is the City of Fort Collins Household Hazardous Waste Collection event. The goal is to help residents clean out chemicals out of their household and get them disposed of in the most environmentally friendly manner. I'm Justin Carter of Mixed Paints. We recycle post-consumer latex paint. We're working with Susie Gordon and the Fort Collins Waste Department to divert 300 plus gallons of paint from landfills. We'll take that paint and turn it into reusable architectural paint. So it's good stuff. Being a sustainable city means rethinking the way we do business. So utilities of the 21st century is really about creating a sustainable utility. Uh, one that takes us from a resource depleting, resource exploiting utility to a resource conservation and efficiency. Much of our water supply for Fort Collins originates in the Cache La Poudre Basin. That water then goes into a reservoir which is called Joe Wright Reservoir or it is taken from a direct flow right off the Cache La Poudre River. We divert that water at Gateway Park. That goes to a water treatment facility. We then treat that water and then distribute it to our customers throughout Fort Collins area. Of course, one of the best strategies is to reduce use. For example, a native landscape like we see here can exist on normal rainfall, 15 to 16 inches a year, whereas bluegrass what you see here typically takes 30 inches of supplemental water per year just to stay green. We offer residential sprinkler audits for any City of Fort Collins water customers. It is a free service because if we can actually educate you to use less water, we're going to have more water in the supply for the future. And we have a program to try to educate people with how that sprinkler system works, how much those plants need to survive in a healthy environment. I remember back in 2001 and 2, we were using about 70 some odd million gallons in the high, high peaks of the day. We're down in the 40s right now. So we've cut about 30 million gallons, almost half our total water use on those peak July and August days. We have our water conservation plan and our the goal, our water use goal in there is to uh, reduce water use to 140 gallons per person per day. In the 1990s we were at over 200. Last year we were at 146 so we were getting close. One of the things we're looking at is doing more drought tolerant landscaping. Look at this median, this is beautiful. And I think one of the things as we begin to take on sustainability to another level is to begin to look at our streetscapes, our parks and our natural areas to try and create a much more beautiful community and also a much more drought tolerant one. Spring Canyon Park is a great example of a wonderful design that incorporates the turf grass plants that kids play on and we have a lot of athletics to the native grasses that are on the edge. So this is a hundred acre park probably only irrigating 50 acres of it. Eighty percent of our water that we use in our parklands, golf courses, cemeteries is raw water. We irrigate all of our parkland at 95 percent or less of evapotranspiration rate, which means it's just a tad five percent less than what the plants need. Yeah, the city of Fort Collins, as far as what we see in the state, are among the most efficient parks at, at reducing the amount of water that they do apply. Uh, using alternative water sources, that type of thing. Water is not the only thing we're trying to conserve. Energy is a big one. To the degree we can reduce our electrical consumption, we can have a dramatic impact on carbon emissions. And if we do it really well, we can potentially eliminate the need for another power plant. Our efficiency goals we have in Fort Collins are very aggressive. Our goals on the electric side are to save 22 million kilowatt hours every year 
Now a kilowatt hour doesn't mean a whole lot to most people, but that's equivalent to the use of about 2,700 typical homes. So we have programs for existing homes, for example, that provide a very low cost energy audit. You know, a comprehensive home inspection, visual checks. We do blower door tests that test how much a house leaks air in and out, as well as using infrared cameras to kind of see behind the walls or what's inside. We do poster campaigns throughout the community, we do ad campaigns, we do web promotions, we have events. So we try to meet people where they are and get as many ways out there because the more you hit a person with your message, the more likely they are to actually save that energy and water that you're asking them to save. ClimateWise is a free voluntary program sponsored by the city and we've helped businesses reduce energy, water, waste and transportation and during 2010 we helped businesses save more than 13 million dollars and over 136,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions. You know, one of the things we're doing to try and help achieve these goals is to work with all of the new buildings that we build and get those to at least lead gold or platinum higher. But then also look at the buildings around the community. There are so many existing buildings and that's really where the measurable progress can be made. Buildings don't use energy, people do. Just by changing behaviors with the staff and then with the customer by turning off lights, by turning off computers, putting recycle bins around the building has made the biggest impact of anything. There was a large lighting retrofit that was completed in the last couple of years. Mechanical systems have been replaced and they could come up with wonderful ideas on how they can save energy in their buildings. And so the outcome was literally they saved more than $100,000 in our major recreation facilities last year. So here we are at the newly renovated Lincoln Center. We happen to be in the gallery right now. You know, we've learned from this building and we learn from each facility that we redevelop in, each building that we work on, and we learn a lot of lessons just in general about sustainability. And I think that as we learn those lessons, it's important for us to share those with others. And as we share that with others, we also expect and hope that they will share with us. The Lincoln Center has just joined up with the Rocky Mountain Greener Venue Partnership, Red Rocks Amphitheater, Coors Ball Field, Colorado Convention Center, Denver Zoo. We get together once a month, sit down, talk about what's working, what's not working for our facilities. Being able to talk to somebody else in the business and say, look, how are you doing recycling or how are you doing composting? And they can say, you know, here's what's worked for us. Here's what we found out didn't work for us. We can then learn from them and not have to go through the same challenges that they have. So when we talk about sustainability, it's not just the things that we do. It's also our practices. It's the things that we purchase. Are they energy efficient? Are they green? Do they have a low environmental footprint? And it's also about those suppliers looking at what they do and making sure that their efforts are also green in the way they develop their products. We're doing a green purchasing study and that's coming in to look at how the City of Fort Collins is currently doing green purchasing. Where are we today? What should we be doing? Are there things we're missing? How can we improve our game in that regard? We've been trying to purchase more efficient vehicles for a number of years. We've got a hybrid bucket truck that we're using. Recently, we've converted a couple of vehicles to electric. These are Toyota Priuses and a Ford Escape. These were traditional hybrids from the factory that we put extra battery packs in to make them all electric or extend the fuel economy. These charging pedestals were designed by a local company, Spire, and the power is cut off during the peak demand times. In the Prius cases, we're getting over 100 miles to the gallon with our new battery packs. Automobiles are one of the biggest challenges we've got. They're one of the biggest emitters of carbon. And at the same time, it's one of the most difficult things for us to control. So in 2010, we completed a major signal retiming project where we checked and retimed all of the traffic signals on the major arterial streets in town. The goal of that project was to minimize stops and delays and thereby travel times for people as they drive around town on the major arterial street. When we were done with the retiming project, we actually did travel time studies to assess the benefit. We estimate, based on those travel time runs, that we reduced CO2 emissions by about 8,800 metric tons per year. So it's better for your health the air, your pocketbook. If you don't drive at all, take a bike, walk, ride the bus. In 2010, Transport provided two million rides in Fort Collins. And if all those people had driven their own vehicles, 
we would have put another 5,000 tons of carbon dioxide emissions into the environment. Conservation is the best way to save energy, save water, but at the same time we also have to make sure that we're managing our resources and looking for the resources that we need in order to preserve and protect our future. The city of Fort Collins owns a lot of senior water rights, however we are very limited on our storage capacity. But we only have Jorite Reservoir, as I alluded to earlier, is about a little over 6,000 acre feet of storage. We, on the other hand, use about 28,000 acre feet of water per year. We have no place to put that water if we have excess water, and that's why we need to have a storage vessel. So we have many water rights, but to be able to exercise those water rights over time, what the utility really needs is a place to store that water and utilize that on an as-needed basis. That's why Halligan Reservoir is such an important part of our water supply management program. The more renewable energy we can get distributed throughout the community and integrate into our system using the advanced meter technology, the technologies that come around system-wide management systems, the more we can offset that need for peak energy demand. So again, we're saving our customers money. Innovation is an important part of sustainability. Some things are small and sensible. For example, Fort Collins owns a couple of fields north of town that someday will be detention ponds. We had a really good rainy year last year, as a matter of fact, and, and before we could get to it, the grass was very tall and hard for us to mow with our regular mowers. So I just kind of thought maybe we could hay it, donate it to the city's Martinez farm, because it saves us money not having to mow it four or five times. And then there are the big things. So here we are at the Engines and Energy Conversion Laboratory one of the truly great successes of our community. Here they're working on efforts that will change the planet, doing great things through social entrepreneurship, creating clean and renewable energy. This all forms kind of the basis of what we call the triple helix, which is City of Fort Collins working together with Colorado State University and private businesses to create a more sustainable future. One of the key elements of that, by the way, is Fort Zed, internationally recognized now. Fort Zed, Zero Energy District. Our goal is to create what could be the largest energy district in the world. A Zero Energy District is a physical district that uses as much energy as it can create within that district. Think of it as an island that could be self-sustaining. This is a substantial challenge. To achieve the goals of the Zero Energy District requires a high level of cooperation and collaboration among users of energy in the area, lots of energy resources, improved energy efficiency. All of these kinds of things are incremental steps to take us towards a Zero Energy District. You know, one of the most important aspects of sustainability and being successful at sustainability is the way we design our cities. We're standing here at the site of the Future South Transit Center, which is our future bus rapid transit system, as part of the Mason Corridor. I think as we begin to think about sustainability, one of the biggest challenges we face is how to get people out of their cars and become more sustainable in terms of reducing vehicle miles driven. Mason Corridor is really one of our first opportunities to do that. And if we think about the future, we create very high quality architecture, very high quality urban environment, people love to be on it, and we really encourage them to get out of their cars and take this transit corridor. I think we can do a great job in trying to make a better and more sustainable community. It's a great opportunity to have along these stops and along these corridors mixed uses for residential, commercial, people to be living, working and playing in and along the corridor. So here we are at the north end of the Mason Corridor and as you can see behind me is a type of mixed-use development that is under construction that we envision happening along the corridor in the future at the various transit stops. This type of development allows for opportunities to recreate for as you can see the cultural opportunities with the museum and then a vacant lot that's poised for redevelopment in the future to complement the Mason Corridor. If we can create density, and we can create density that's very, very high quality, that people want to live in, play in, walk in, ride in, we can create a wonderful community and at the same time reduce the amount of miles that people travel in their cars. 
One of the unique things about infill development is that it's unlike greenfield development because of the, the constraints that are there. And so what we try to do is work with and partner with developers to meet their needs at the same time as making sure that the buildings address the city's needs, its plans, and its vision so that these uses and the buildings can adapt over time as our community changes. So there you have it. That's our tour. It's a, just a few of the things that we're doing in our community and citywide, every employee is working hard to do a great job. Sustainability is very important not only for us today, but for our children and our grandchildren and also for the planet. We hope to be a demonstration model for the rest of the country with the practices we're doing and we're just very excited to be able to show you this today and to look forward to the future.